Welcome back to the second episode of the Caffeine Cast, and I just want to start this episode off by saying I am really excited about this podcast. I've always wanted to sort of do a podcast. I've been thinking about doing a podcast for a while now, probably over, I'd say over a year and a half. I actually tried to make a podcast back... I don't know, it was when I was still in my college apartment, and it didn't go too well, I didn't have a good microphone like I do now, so now I'm taking the deep dive and really going in for it, but I hope you all are having a great day, and today I want to talk about some different topics, I want to talk about how I got into coffee, how you guys can maybe start to like coffee if you don't like coffee, if you're watching this and don't like coffee, I have to assume that maybe you like energy drinks, something like that, but Coffee is an acquired taste. You gotta sort of learn to like it. And um, also want to give a disclaimer. Disclaimer: I'm still getting over uh, whatever I had. I think it was COVID, but uh, my voice is still not 100%. I'm still kind of congested, so I just wanted to say that. And yeah, so uh, <clears throat> had a bunch of different plans for uh, what I was going to talk about today, but of course I forgot about everything I wanted to talk about as soon as I pushed the record button, um, but I also got a mic arm, so that's pretty cool, and this isn't the completed setup yet. I want to replace this table, get a wooden table, and I hope that you can't really hear this too much. Yeah, it shouldn't be too bad because I know that when I was doing my other like caffeine reviews and stuff, when I whenever I put something down on the table, it doesn't matter how lightly I placed it down on the table, it would always make a really bad like banging sound. So I hope that's not an issue now that I got um the the mic arm and and all that because um this mic is supposed to be like shock absorbent or something, so you don't need like a shock mount for it or anything. So I don't know too much about microphones, but I do know I know enough. So Hope that's that's not an issue now. So, uh, yeah, I, oh yeah, I did remember what I wanted to talk about too. I want to talk about some goals for this channel over the course of the year. So, what am I doing? Um, like, what's my upload schedule going to be? Uh, what am I going to do in terms of podcast? Is it going to be on Spotify? Sort of that kind of thing. And I want to say that. It's not on Spotify yet. Uh, I I may keep it on YouTube for a while, though. And the reason for that is because, well, first of all, Spotify is hard to post on. Like, you have to have, like, a RSS link and, and all this other stuff. And I can set up an RSS feed, and I also want to host it myself. So hosting your own, like, RSS feed is, is kind, of, um, kind of a mystery to me. I've done some research on it and stuff, and I think I can do it. I think I know how to, but I just don't want to, you know, take the time and do that before I even know if this podcast is going to be successful, if I'm going to actually follow through with it, which I hope I do, because I love having an outlet to just talk about stuff for however long, so that's pretty nice, and yeah, so it's it's probably going to be on YouTube for now, and I have some more plans in the future, but I'm not going to really talk about those for right now, because I don't know if I'm actually going to do it or not, um, but I do want to definitely continue the podcast, and as far as the upload schedules and and stuff like that goes I I want to probably try to upload one podcast a week so probably every day on Monday I know that the first episode wasn't posted on a Monday <clears throat> but I do want it to be I, I, I want to try to post this this episode on Monday and from from then on just just have a podcast every Monday and of course there will be gaps uh, because I know that I'm going to be taking a few vacations and hopefully as long as it's not you know too long of a vacation or anything I can I can um, pre-make some ed episodes and stuff like that but podcasts are, are I mean it takes a lot of time to make because I mean you got to talk for like an hour or so at a time I want to see if this coffee is hot and like cool enough to drink yet and it, it mm, that's some good Colombian coffee but um yeah p podcasts just take a while to produce because I mean you're sitting in a room for an hour talking then you gotta you know edit it and everything and yeah so also what I want to talk about is the actual channel so caffeine reviews where are they at coffee reviews stuff like that why have I not made any yet? Why am I posting two podcast episodes in a row? And that is because <clears throat> I don't have the best 
coffee equipment in, in the world. And, you know, if I step back and you do this, I don't have the best equipment to make coffee. It, it was okay. The stuff that I have, it, it was okay enough to, you know, get this channel started and everything. But I needed more high quality stuff. I want a big, like, Chemex uh, with paper filters. Um, I'm using the same kettle. Kettle doesn't really matter too much. You just kind of need to know the temperature that it's at and everything. <clears throat> and then also, and sorry, I'm clearing my throat a lot, but I also got like a scale so I can measure ratios better and, and just stuff like that. So I also got a decent or well, actually like top of the line grinder cost me a lot of money. It's a hand grinder, but it was very expensive for a hand grinder and all that sh stuff should be here in the mail like by next week. <clears throat> So that will be uh, really good when I get that and I'll start doing coffee reviews again. And I'm going to have to get like my method, uh, you know, sharpened up again because I haven't made pour over coffee in a while. Um, I just just started uh, making pour over coffee again when I have started this podcast. So that that's going to take a while to get my method honed in and everything. So I also want to show you guys how I make coffee and I want to make a whole video on that. So that'll be fun because a lot of people don't know how to make pour over coffee. A lot of people, it's like, oh, that's a, that's a lot of work to, to just make a cup of coffee, and that, that just seems like uh, really hard and complicated. You have to measure everything out and get it exactly right, or it doesn't taste good, and all this. And it's, it's really not that hard. That's the only way that I made coffee when I was in college. So, like... I mean, it's it's not that hard. I did have to get up, at least because in, in 2021, we had all online classes. So uh, I would have to get up. Normally, I would, if I didn't have to make coffee, I'd wake up like five minutes before the class started and hopefully make it get my computer booted in time. But um, if I wanted to make coffee and everything, which sometimes I woke up late and wasn't able to make coffee, I had to wake up, you know, 30 minutes before I wanted to, um, before, uh, class, just because coffee took a while to make, you know, had to heat the kettle up and everything, but it's really not that much work after you get used to it and, you know, you get in the groove and everything because it's, I mean, it, it just produces such a, such a better quality cup of coffee than just, you know, putting something in the coffee maker. And I just, I just think it's the, it's the better way to make coffee. And I know that I'm saying it's the better way to make coffee. And I've been making, you know, Keurig coffee for the past however long the, um, I've been, been out of college like a year now, probably. So I, I, I just, I want to get back into it, but I, I do understand the convenience of a coffee maker, but I'm, I'm trying. So don't call me too much of a hypocrite. So, um, also, uh, goals for this channel. What are my goals for this channel this year? Because I talked about, you know, sort of my plans for the channel next year in the first episode of the podcast, but I do have goals for the channel that I want to hit by the end of the year. I think that, you know, within about six months or so, I want to try to hit a thousand subscribers. If I hit 1000 subscribers in six months, which I think is totally attainable, if I try and if I just keep posting consistently, I will be ecstatic. And I'm not going to sit, set any goals for the end of the year because I don't know how this year is going to go. You know, plans change. Or, uh, I mean, things change really quickly and everything. So I think that um, I, I have a number in my head, and uh, who cares, I'll say it, I want to hit 10,000 subscribers, like, if I hit 10,000 subscribers, that would be insane, but I don't really know how many people are really interested in coffee, but one of the other reasons I wanted to make a podcast is because I think that you guys get to know who I am, and I can sort of form more of a community around that, because, sure, you get views on reviews, you get views on, um, well, yeah, reviews. That's basically what my channel has consisted of so far, and you get views on those. I'm not going to lie. I mean, uh, some of my videos do good, some of my videos do bad, but I want to really form a community because if you form a community, people can start coming back. You know, they're a part of something, and I can I can just uh, build off of that. So that's what I'm trying to do with this podcast. I want to just 
let you guys know who I am. Um, just and and just sit down and drink a cup of coffee with me on a on a Monday morning or a Monday night or whatever. And <clears throat> if you guys don't think that Monday is the best day to post a podcast, then just drop it in the comments down below. Maybe Friday's the best day to record a podcast, but Friday or to upload a podcast. But Friday's the also the best day to record for me. Like I just got home from work today, made a cup of coffee and started up the podcast. And another good thing with podcasts is it's pretty low effort. And I don't mean that in a bad way, like, oh, I'm lazy. I don't want to put effort into my videos or anything. But it takes a lot of time to make review videos because you have to, you know, make the script. Well, first, you got to actually, you know, try the product before you even can write the script. But then you got to sit there with your cup of coffee, you know, take a couple sips of it and everything like that and then you got to write some notes about it and then you got to you got to try it out over the course of a few days does it keep you awake uh what does it you know um do you have a hard if it's an energy drink for example do you have a really bad crash after you drink the energy drink there's a lot of stuff that goes into reviews and i mean i can't produce i can't just you know turn on the camera and, and produce a review and i like to make videos i like to sit down in front of the camera and talk so i just think this podcast is really going to be a good outlet for me to do that and it's not going to be only about caffeine i mean i'm just going to talk about random stuff and i don't have plans of you know having guests on right now. It's just going to be, you know, just me talking into a microphone for a while at least. But I, I do, maybe, maybe I'll have guests in the future. But honestly, my recording setup isn't really designed for that right now because I'm just, you know, sitting in front of a camera. I don't have the biggest table in the world. Like you can't, my table, the edges of the table are out of frame, but it's not that big of a table. So just, and I couldn't really have someone sitting across from me. I don't have another microphone and I've tested actually putting the microphone in the center of the table and seeing like how bad it would be to talk back and forth with somebody, and it's it, it's not that great. It's a little echoey in this room. I got to turn the gain up, and it's just it, it's just not the best best experience trying to uh, <clears throat> capture two voices with with one microphone. So I would definitely have to you know get another microphone if I wanted to invite guests to the podcast. But for right now, I think this is the best thing. Just you know me talking to a camera and. Yeah, so and I, I like this because podcasts are a podcast. Well, podcasts by yourself are a really interesting thing because I have certain things that I want to talk about in my head, but I don't. I don't have them written out. I mean, all that I have on my computer screen right now is the audio recording, and just in case I need to Google stuff or something, I can. I can do that right here. But right now, all I have is the audio recording. Is I just see a waveform on my screen right now, so I don't have a script. Don't have any anything like that and I'm just thinking off the top of my head I'm thinking in real time what to talk about and you know just what what I should say next and some topics to talk about so I just want to keep this conver or this podcast really conversational just be relaxed drink some coffee and and just sit down and have a good time because that's uh, I I just think that's the best way to do a podcast and I would like to have back and forth conversations with excuse me, I'd like to have some back and forth conversations with people. And I, I do like having conversations with people. And I would like to have more conversations with the people. Because I think that's something that not a lot of people do. Because, you know, I, when I was going to college, I'll talk about this a little bit. It was so weird going to college, even before the pandemic in like 2019. Maybe this was just my experience as sort of a socially awkward person. And I've gotten better over the course of this year. But like, no one really wanted to talk like I was I I went into my I remember my first my very first class in college I went into the, in 2018 I went sat down in the room it was an English class and the whole classroom actually a funny story that I'll get into after this um I just I went sat down in the class the entire class was silent there was just no sound like no one was talking Everybody was just kind of looking around, you know, kind of nervous. You hear some chairs shuffling, but the whole entire class is silent. And and also this, this, this was, this is what I saw a lot of.
That's how everyone in the class was. And it was kind of weird. Like, everybody was just absorbed into their phone. And, I mean, I'm guilty, too. Like, I didn't want to be the person that broke the silence and, like, hey, how are you doing? Like... I didn't want to be that person. No one wanted to be that person. Then the teacher came in, and actually, this happened on what I was about to talk about happened on the second day, but what I did the first day, the very first day of college classes, I went into the wrong classroom. It was an English class, and I knew that, and I was looking at the the, the number, the, the room number or whatever. I was in the right building, and <clears throat> the room number, I don't know what the room number was, but it started with a 2, the the room that I went into started with a one. Like, the last two numbers are the same. And I went into a room on the first floor. My class was on the second floor, but it was still an English building. So I was, like, still in an English class. And it was, like, the same, like, branch of class. Like, it was, like, English 101, English 102, you know, that kind of thing. I was in the English 102 class. And the teacher didn't call roll that day because I think schedules weren't finalized or something. So I went into the wrong class the very first day of classes. So that was bad, too. I'm glad she didn't call roll or anything. But I just didn't go back to that class in the second day oh my god that was so bad and I was scared to talk to the teacher I was embarrassed to tell the teacher so I just emailed her I didn't even like I just went to classes on the second day it went to the right classroom then after class I emailed her like hey um I was uh absent yesterday but I really wasn't absent because I attended class but it was the wrong classroom and she didn't correct my absence, so I still got counted absent for that day. Um, really nice teacher, but she didn't correct that for me. Um, but uh, yeah, I just thought that was really funny. And then this this teacher gets so mad at us because then the second day of classes, I, I went to the correct classroom and it was the same thing, just people on their phones and people looking looking around like that and and then looking back at their phone looking around nervously, looking back at their phone, just no one talking, and the the classroom is dead silent. The teacher walks in, she she pauses, looks around at the front of the class. You guys are really silent. You guys are really quiet. This is the quietest class that I've ever heard, had. And then, like, but it was the same way with every class. I don't know if it was just, you know, my grade in particular or, like, my age group that just didn't want to talk to people. If we were just all nervous because it was the first day of school, we didn't know anybody or what. Because it was like that in every single class that I went into. It got a little bit better as the school year went on. Like, we started talking to each other, like, a little bit. But even then, it was just, like, requiring required people or you know if you you had to talk to somebody they would talk to you but it it was just it was a really weird experience and I don't know if that was just my experience or that's how everybody's experience was because just no one talked to each other and then when I went to Clemson it was almost the same exact way like a few more people talk to each other because it's a university. More people are going to know each other because you live there and everything like that. But there was this kid that I sat next to in, I think it was political theory. And I was ready to talk to people. I was I was there. I was trying to make friends at that point. And the political theory teacher, you know, um, she was like, okay, we'll, we'll learn about... Um, we're going to learn about each other, and we're going to be discussing some heavy topics in this class, so we need to all be comfortable around each other. So um, I have a list of questions here. The questions get uh, progressively more personal, and just to just go through these questions. You can skip a few questions if you want to, and then we're going to introduce the other person to the rest of the class. And this guy, I was trying to be friendly. I mean, I had some social skills. I wasn't because I, I had worked, and I had to deal with, you know, Know, clients and stuff like that so I was kind of already accustomed to talking people to people at that point so you know I, t I talked to this guy and I was I was just going off I was trying to have a normal conversation like I'm having with my camera alone in private right now but I was just talking to this guy normally and he was just like yes no and then I was like what is uh, let's see what a random question that I would have to ask him it was like you know what is the scariest uh, moment of your life or something like that and w where were you the most scared I mean this I mean these questions got personal so it was like what's the scariest moment of your life or where were you most embarrassed or something like that and he would say I don't know I was scared to jump in a pool one time, I think. And then I would ask him, like, 
okay, well, what was the most embarrassing moment of your life? Um, probably because I was, uh, I don't know, scared to jump in a pool. <laughs> like, like it was, it was bad. And there were some good people in this, this political theory class. And I made some friends in that class, but it seemed like the majority of people just didn't want to talk. I mean, I don't want to say, you know, these darn kids and the internet has ruined everything, but I've talked to, like, people, like, uh, this guy that I'm working with right now, I was talking to him today, and he's like, yeah, everyone's weird, no one wants to, like, talk about stuff, and this is kind of funny, I don't... (laughs) I, I doubt he'll actually watch this podcast, but he said that, like, if his girlfriend has something, like, really intense that she wants to tell him, like, that she's, like, scared of or, like, nervous about or anxious about, she won't, like, tell him. She'll text it to him, even though they're in the same room. And I'm like, bro, really? No, that's that's weird. Like, he's getting ready... <laughs> he's getting ready to get married and she still does this like like what like what what is wrong with people like and don't get me wrong I was a little bit introverted I mean I was I was I was scared to talk to people too but I tried to talk to people but it just got really awkward like these people didn't want to talk like I would talk to them and they wouldn't talk they wouldn't talk back it was it was just insane so Ha huh. and there's another there's another instance of that that I wanted to I wanted to talk about for a second but I, just my mind completely went blank. Um but yeah, this <laughs> I I de- I've devolved into a tangent so much but yeah, so I would like to have some people on the podcast to actually talk to because I like to have conversations because oh yeah, it and I think I'm going to sneeze. Oh no. Oh, I should have like a sneeze button or something I can just use to mute my mic if I'm going to cough or sneeze or clear my throat or anything like that. But uh, yeah, at the let's see, not the beginning of this year. It's already the beginning of this year. It's 2023 now. 2022, I started do, doing a lot of client work, like a lot of client work uh, in my job, IT support. And I was having to go out to clients. I was having to make a bunch of phone calls. I was having to schedule stuff. I mean, I was doing I was doing a ton of stuff. And at the beginning of the year, I had two other people, and this one guy, he knew that I was, you know, a little bit introverted and didn't like to talk to people, so he would send me out to clients on purpose to make me go and talk to people. And there's been a lot of awkward situations, and especially because almost everyone left the company, like, in the middle of the year, like in June of this year, uh, I was on vacation and was informed that someone, like, someone was leaving the company, and then before that, someone else, had one of the managers had left the company, it was just a bad situation altogether, and then I had to start going out to clients that I didn't even get introduced to, because during this one guy's last week, I was like, hey, will you take me out to clients, you know, in introduce me to all of our clients because I'm, I'm going to have to support these people. I need to like, I need to know them and everything. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take you out to clients. I'll introduce them to you. It's no big deal. And I had been doing some client work before that, but I didn't know like everybody that the business supported. And you know, I was going to be the only support guy. Okay. Sorry. The camera cut out again. Um, it, it cuts out around, you know, 23, 24 minutes. So I need to, I need to try to get that worked on because I need to I want to actually, I was on a rant. I need to still be able to, I need to not be cut off in the middle of a rant. But anyway, I need to be introduced to all of these different clients. And he's like, yeah, yeah, Drake, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce them to you. It's no big deal. And I went out to these, uh, um, and he would go out to these clients and like, I would get to the office that morning and he would just be making his rounds. And I would be like, bro, I thought you were going to introduce me to these clients. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'll introduce you to these clients later this week. It's it's fine. And this was like after he had put in his two weeks notice. So I knew he was leaving the company at this point. And he never introduced me to these people. So at that point, after he left, I had to go out to these clients and be like, hey, and the the sort of, and you may be thinking, oh, it's an IT support company. They have like a bunch of techs, whatever. You're going out to people. They request tech support. You're going out to people, but that's not really how our company works. We have a our company is a little bit differently structured. It's uh, we like to be you know friends with our clients. We like to get to know these people. We like to you know be a part of their company, make them feel all warm and fuzzy and everything about us coming out and you know supporting them. So it it's more of a you know uh, you know you have a friendship relationship with these people because we're a really small town and and that's what 
and that's what people really like about our company. So I was um, just going out to these clients, and they're like, oh, where's the other guy? And he had told a lot of people that he had he was, you know, quitting and everything, but a lot of the time they're like, oh, where's this guy? Oh, he left? Oh, no, what, well, who are you? And there was a lot of awkward conversations. There was a lot of, hey, I'm Drake. I'm from insert company name here. I'm going to be the new support guy from now on. And they're, and they're just shocked. And they're like, really? Who? What? And I had one lady. Oh, my God. This is bad. I had one lady. <laughs> I went out to them. Never been to this client before. And she, I walked in the door. And I'm like, hey, I'm from insert company name here. I'm here to check out your internet email insert tech issue here. Oh, yeah, I remember what I was doing. I was actually just setting up some monitors that day because they couldn't set up monitors. And I was like, hey, I'm here to here to set up the monitors. And she looks at me, has a confused look on her face. No, hello. How are you? Anything? I said, how are you? And she just doesn't respond to me. And she looks me dead in the eye. Are you old enough to drive? Just just out of the blue. Bro, I'm I'm 22 now and growing a beard. Do I look like I'm 16? And she just says that, catches me off guard. I don't know how to respond and I just I just look at her and say yeah, I'm 21, and I was at a church doing this. It was a, it was one of our clients. It was at a church, so I wasn't, I wasn't, I, I wanted to say like, yes, ma'am, I'm actually old enough to drink for your information, but I'm not going to say that to a client. Got to be, got to be nice and everything. But that just caught me so off guard. I didn't know how to even respond to it. It was just, it was just a crazy situation. And I've had, <clears throat> not, I think that's one of the. It's not the worst situation I've had. I've had some worse situations out there just with client interactions and stuff. I've been yelled at on the phone before, which isn't fun. I've been, eh, haven't been yelled at in person yet, but it, it's just insane kind of, kind of working with people. I know that like a lot of people have worse interactions with people because, you know, working with the public, but we only do like business to business IT support. So it's not quite as bad, but it, it still can get interesting sometimes. So over the course of 2021, doing all of that, you know, just going out to places completely unannounced and introducing myself, I've gotten, I think, relatively good at, for my age at social interaction. I know that's weird to say good at social interaction for my age, but it's true because a lot of people just don't know how to interact, you know, socially because it's all through Twitter and, you know, social media these days. And that's another thing like dating and stuff is, is insane because most people use online dating apps. Most people use Tinder. Uh, more and more and more people are getting, finding, you know, who they're going to marry through Tinder. And I just think that's kind of insane. And I, I know I'm an IT support guy and I'm complaining about technology ruining social interaction, but I've come to enjoy social interaction and I'm still not an extrovert. I don't go out to, uh, on the weekends to have fun and stuff. I rather stay inside and play video games, but I would like it a little bit more just if I had more people to talk to. So maybe that's an option for the podcast. Maybe I can have some guests on, talk to them. Um, maybe people that are, you know, in the, uh, in like the coffee roasting business or, or something like that. Um, some other YouTubers that do coffee stuff when I have some more subscribers, when I have some more clout and can get those people on the podcast. But maybe that's something I'll do someday, um, have some friends on, talk to them. But yeah, so I don't really have a format for this podcast. I mean, it's just, you know, talking to people and that's kind of what I want to do. I'm sounding like Joe Rogan right now. I'm so sorry. But... <laughs> And that's one thing that someone, um, one of my friends said, he said, oh, you're apologizing a lot in the, in, in like the, the first few minutes of this podcast, but I don't know the format yet. I haven't gotten the flow of it and I'm just, I'm just talking and trying my best right now. <laughs> and just talking for that long, just straight is really difficult. And I don't know when to take a drink of coffee. It's kind of awkward. Just, you know, going silent, just keeping eye contact with the camera the whole time and I, I keep looking over here to the side because I'm watching my audio just go to make sure it doesn't shut off because I'm glad that I was looking at the camera and caught it uh, when it shut off because I would just been ranting forever <clears throat> and oh yeah so to actually get back to caffeine uh, now that I lost you know 90% of my viewership um, 
I want to talk about, you know, uh, how I got into coffee. So how I got into coffee is an interesting story. I d and I don't want to, and just keep in mind that I'm not a coffee connoisseur. I'm not, probably not qualified to talk about coffee, but I'm doing it anyway. And I know a decent bit about coffee. I don't think you, you don't have to have a degree to talk about coffee. You just have to enjoy the product. You got to enjoy it, know how to describe the flavors, describe it to other people. It is a learning curve, I would say, but I'm not the most, most experienced person out there. I haven't been, you know, going to, you know, um, roasters and in testing like some pristine coffee for for you know 20 years or anything but I think I'm decently experienced in it and I didn't get into coffee until probably about 2016 because you know I'd had coffee before you know my dad making a pot of coffee when I was younger and you know uh letting me taste it when I was like seven years old just to see the the look on my face of of me cringing and you know I had some friends in school that were like uh, like elementary school that just loved coffee and I'm like are you insane like it's so bitter like why why are you drinking it like how do you enjoy this but then well I, now I know I, I realize uh, the the deliciousness of coffee now but Aside from, uh, like, tasting when I was really young, I didn't get into coffee until probably 2016 when I started actually working, and I, you know, I was having to get up early in the morning, you know, I was uh, working at, I've been working at the same IT company forever because it's my dad's company, um, but I, every, everyone was, you know, 30 years older than me, so they're all drinking coffee and everything, so I was like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try to drink some coffee, and my dad, the way he drinks coffee is black, and I was like, okay, well, that's the only way to drink coffee, and I would go in there, you know, uh, push the button on the Keurig, get some coffee, and, you know, you know, carefully take a sip, like, And, you know, make that face and then bring it back to my desk and, and, and torture myself at my desk by just taking a few sips of coffee. I mean, I didn't like it. I didn't like it for a long time. Then I would go to my desk and Google, like, how to like coffee. And then I'd find a bunch of articles about people that hate, absolutely hated coffee and just were just, just completely shitting on it. And, <laughs> and there was... There was, I kid you not, there were so many articles, it was just like, coffee is the worst thing known to man, why do people like this, it should be legal, people are addicts, and, and all this other stuff, and I would, I, and I found some articles that, that like teach you how to like coffee and stuff, and finally this guy that worked for the company, he's like, Drake, are you trying to drink coffee, and, and I would go, and like, it pains me now to think about it, but I would just pour out, like the whole co like whole cup of coffee, like I would try to drink it, but I would only get like, maybe uh, like a fourth of the cup, and then I would go and just give up and pour it out, and he's like, Drake, are you trying to drink coffee, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to drink coffee, and he would just say, well, well, hold on, your dad doesn't know how to make coffee, here's how you really make coffee, and he would put some, like, flavored coffee in the coffee maker, and then, like, pour, like, half a cup of sugar in it, and, like, uh, you know, half a gallon of milk afterwards, mix it all together, and be like, here, try this, and I'm like, ooh, tastes like sugar and milk, there's no coffee in this whatsoever, <laughs> and uh, honestly, that's how I started to like coffee, because you got to get used to the flavor. It is extremely bitter, but there's layers to the bitterness. It's, I mean, it's kind of like, kind of like alcohol. I haven't, you know, fully gotten, I've just turned 21 last year, so I haven't quite gotten fully used to the alcohol taste yet, but it's kind of like alcohol. You got to get used to it. You got to learn to enjoy it, learn to, you know, experience the finer details of, of coffee. And one way that I would, I would recommend is get a medium roast coffee, because I think that I'm sticking by this, even though it's, uh, I may change this later, but I think that medium roast coffee is some of the best tasting coffee. You can argue that light roast tastes better, and I understand why people say that light roast tastes better. It does bring out some more flavors. I'm going to be reviewing some light roast coffee, but I think that medium roast is a good place to start out, and you can, you can, uh, <coughs> Excuse me. 
you can you can put some creamer in it. It pains me to say that, but just put some creamer in it, put some milk in it, put a little bit of sugar in it, and just get used to the bitterness of it. Get used to that coffee flavor because there is a generic taste that all coffee has no matter what type of coffee it is. It's going to have a generic coffee taste. So just get used to that flavor and then and then try to wean yourself off of the creamer because I don't think you should always be putting creamer in your coffee because it's not a good way to enjoy the coffee. It waters it down and stuff, but starting out, put some creamer in it, get used to that coffee taste, and then slowly, little by little, start lessening the amount of creamer that you put in it. And then after a while, maybe um, start, and then before you're even ready, start drinking black coffee because what I did in 2016, 2017 is finally... Every morning before I left the house, even though my work gave away free or gave free coffee, I would um I would drink. Well, actually, no, this was probably so. I just interned for that summer um in 2017. I probably didn't start actually, and then I I didn't start actually hardcore going to try to like coffee and pro and probably until the. 2018 probably when I started when I started college because then I really needed it and then later I started the channel but what I would do is every morning before I go to school I would drink a full cup of black coffee and I'm not gonna lie it was hard to get down like there were some mornings that I felt like I was gonna throw up off of it but it's just what you got to do if you're if you want to like coffee and you want to like start enjoying coffee and get the caffeine benefits of coffee it's it's a good thing it's a good thing to do it's a it's kind of a painful process and you're like Drake why do you torture yourself with it why did you force yourself to like coffee if you're about to throw up when you drink it well I wanted the I wanted the benefits of it because you know drinking energy drinks back in that time rain and bang were a thing but they had a lot of caffeine for one but I'm not saying that's a bad thing, definitely not. You can't have too much caffeine. Um, unless it's really late on the weekend. I want to get into that a little bit. But um it's muttering into the microphone at this point. But um yeah, so I wanted to, you know, enjoy the benefits of coffee because the difference between an energy drink and coffee is an energy drink gets you wired. Like you you sit upright you sit upright and you get wired off of an energy drink and I didn't want that anymore I didn't want to feel like I was I was uh, doing some like hard drugs to get amped up for school or anything get am- amped up for a workout I wasn't I wasn't trying to I wasn't trying to do that where coffee is just sort of a wake you up you know, get you get you started for the day. Get you um, get you awake. You know, caffeine and uh, or coffee. And I've always gave this distinction to many people about it. But you know, coffee is just a, a steady source of energy. It doesn't really get you wired. Now, if you do drink too many cups of coffee, which I've done many times, um you get you get jittery you get really jittery you start start to shake a little bit and that's with everything like if you drink like if you drink two bangs in a row hell if you drink two bangs in a row you might have a heart attack is what you might have but (laughs) i uh you get jittery and all that but if you just have one cup of coffee in the morning you know get you started for the day it actually gives you a pretty sustainable level of energy and actually i want to talk about this a little bit is um, how coffee actually works, and I should make a whole video about this instead of saying it in a podcast, because, I mean, I'm almost 40 minutes into a podcast at this point, so not that many people's probably watching, but, you know, caffeine, how it actually works is super interesting, is, of course, you have um, adenosine receptors in your brain, and adenosine is what triggers your body to um, make you feel tired and sluggish, and your brain breaks down adenosine, And what coffee does, or what caffeine does, is it blocks adenosine from binding to these receptors in your brain. And the more adenosine that floods your brain, um, the more tired or sleepy or foggy or whatever you feel. So caffeine just blocks that. Now, what causes a caffeine crash is that 
when you wake up in the morning, your brain is trying to process this chemical that's making you feel tired, and it breaks it down, then you start to wake up more. That's why you still feel kind of tired when you wake up in the morning, is because your brain hasn't processed all these uh, all these sleepy chemicals. So then you drink some coffee, and it blocks the it kind of pushes the sleepy chemicals out of the way and holds it back and says no, you can't bind to this receptor right now. But then when the caffeine gets broken down, all of those sleepy chemicals, adenosine, floods back into those receptors, and that's what makes you crash after you, um, after the caffeine wears off. So a trick in the morning to actually sort of negate that uh, that you know crash effect, which energy drinks are a little bit different, and I could get into that a little bit more, but something, um, if you, if you wait a little bit, if you wait about an hour and a half after you wake up, it'll give your brain enough time to process that adenosine, and then you drink caffeine, and it'll negate that sort of, you know, sleepy effect, that crash that you get when you drink a lot of caffeine, so that's, that's something that I've, I've learned, and it actually works, because I... I haven't been doing this recently because waking up in the morning has been extremely hard for me here recently and my sleep schedule is uh, messed up but and I need that coffee I need coffee to get me get me energized and out of bed in the morning but if you wait an hour and a half and I've done this in the past I was doing it a few months ago that uh I wasn't drinking coffee until I got to work, and I have about, and you know, it takes me about an hour to get ready, forty-five minutes to drive to work. So, I was I was doing pretty good, and it does negate that crash that you get because, like today, like I drank Death Wish as soon as I got up today, and by around two p.m., I was feeling awful. And but but if you drink caffeine just a little bit later, it'll actually just negate that crash. It won't completely you know, make the crash go away, it's still, you still feel a bit, little bit of a dip in energy, you know, that midday dip, but it definitely helps if you wait, and that can, I can segue into another th- topic that I wanted to talk about, you know, how to actually, um, damn, lost my train of thought, um, Oh yeah, my coffee drinking schedule. But oh, I want to finish the um, the uh, how to like coffee a little bit more. But if you s- start drinking black coffee, like and and you don't even have to finish the whole cup. Just drink a little bit more coffee each day, and maybe even skip the creamer step entirely if you want to be able to say that you drink black coffee. Because you know, being a coffee purist is is trendy and everything. So, if you want to drink black coffee, I would just say, you know, make a cup of coffee a day, one cup, drink as much of it as you can tolerate, and then you don't have to drink anymore. Just drink as much as you can tolerate, and then, you know, I hate to say this, but pour the rest out. You know, it's wasteful and everything, but you're trying to like coffee. So just drink as much as you can handle, and then eventually, you know, over the course of 30 days, you can train your brain to like almost anything, or your taste buds. So just drink a little bit more each day, and then eventually, it and it takes about 30 days, you'll begin to like the flavor of coffee. And then from there, you can dive more into it, you can pick out more subtleties in coffee, because, you know, when you first start drinking coffee, it's just bitter that's just all it is. It's just bitter. That's the overpowering effect of coffee is it's just bitter. So just like with alcohol, um, the overpower, overpowering thing is just burning and, and, you know, that alcohol taste. But the more and more you drink it, you'll, you'll see some subtleties in it. You'll begin to, you know, get that chocolatiness, that fruitiness of the flavor. And like right now, the coffee that I'm drinking, I'll try to rate it a little bit for you guys. Maybe, um, I don't actually know what brand this is. Damn, it's just some brand that my dad picked out, and he said that I should try it, so I did. Uh, that's kind of embarrassing. I don't know what brand of coffee I'm drinking. I know it's Colombian coffee. I know where it comes from, but I don't know exactly what brand it is. Yeah, like, the coffee that I'm drinking right now is really fruity. I, I really like that, actually. I'm getting some maybe, like, blackberry and some blueberry, maybe. And all coffee, you know, 
it has a little bit of a chocolate in a chocolatey. I can't say that word. It has a little bit of a chocolate flavor to it. Um, but yeah, that's really fruity. That's a really you know kind of tropical coffee right there. Um, and that's good. And it depends, you know, where the beans are actually grown at. Each bean, like depending on where it's grown at, will have a different, um, different uh, flavor. Because like Ethiopian beans and have a different flavor than Brazil beans. Brazil beans have a different flavor than you know uh, Colombian beans. And then like Ethiopian coffee is probably some of my favorite coffee actually. And it even depends like if it's grown indoors, if it's grown outdoors, if it has direct sunlight, if it just has you know um, certain bulbs they use in greenhouses a lot of the soil effects I mean it, a ton of things can be involved it's it's like uh, it's like anything else that you know they they grow um just like um wine like grapes I mean anything like anything can affect you know the quality of grapes that you have um for making wine so it's just it's just like anything else you know that's growing from the ground depending on where it's growing at it's going to have a different flavor but um yeah, so if you if you want to enjoy coffee, just start drinking just a little bit a day, and I promise you, within like a month or maybe maybe a month and a half, maybe two months, you'll you'll enjoy coffee. It doesn't take that long at all, and you'll be able to reap the benefits of of enjoying coffee because you know, I mean, it's it's even a social thing. You know, so someone says you want to go get a cup of coffee. You know, it, you want to go to Starbucks. Oh, I want to get uh get some Starbucks today. What do you want? You know. I don't recommend Starbucks, but you know that's the thing that people do. Um, so yeah, it's just a just a just a good thing to enjoy socially, even. So there's a lot of uh, reasons to like coffee, and you can enjoy it. So to get off of that topic a little bit, what are my coffee drinking habits? What are my energy drink habits? Well, I've I've changed a lot since I since I got out of college because in college I was drinking coffee like a lot like I was drinking a coffee a cup of coffee when I woke up I was you know getting a coffee before I went to classes I would get coffee sometimes like in the middle of the day at a coffee shop at school I was I was drinking a lot of coffee for the coffee club I was tasting coffee you know I was drinking a lot of coffee I'd have a cup of coffee at night when I um like uh, midday when I came in drink a cup of coffee with my lunch you know have another one at night to uh, have some evening coffee even, you know, I was drinking a lot of coffee, and uh, two, I was drinking a lot of energy drinks uh, back then too, and I've, I've, of course, my camera shut off again, it's not going dead, I think the file size is just getting too big, because we are 47 minutes in, but, uh, was it, where is I going, um, yeah, I've reduced my coffee drinking habits a lot, and I want to get that figured out, I want to figure out why my, um, camera stops recording and try to get that get that figured out because it's really annoying and I don't want to have to keep cutting and editing this stuff uh so yeah so I've, I've reduced my coffee drinking habits because my sleep schedule is awful um I don't go to sleep until like 1 or 2 a.m sometimes and I got to be up at like 6 o'clock in the morning for work got to be there at 8 and it takes an hour to get ready 45 minutes to drive to work so it takes a while and I like sleep. <laughs> I mean, sleep is almost more important more important than food to me, honestly. Like, I can go, like, a whole day without eating and be perfectly fine. I won't get grouchy or angry or anything like that. But if I don't have sleep, I'm, I'm a snap at somebody. Like, if a client says, like, some wrong stuff to me, like, I'm going to snap. Not actually. I'm not a violent person. But, like, I'll, I'll get aggravated if I don't, if I don't have enough sleep. Um, and even even caffeine can't solve that. Like caffeine will keep me more awake, more alert. And you can probably notice that I've drank more coffee than usual today because I'm just talking a lot, which is good for this podcast. <clears throat> after I got into the flow of it and everything, but um, God, also just having so much caffeine, losing my train of thought. But yeah, I've reduced my coffee intake significantly. So, as I said, like, this morning, I drank some Death Wish, but today's Friday. I don't have to go to sleep early. But over the past, I'd say, two weeks, I've been trying to lower my caffeine intake a little bit, and it's, too, because of this channel. Because... And I know that may be surprising to some people that, you know, I'm running a coffee channel, but I'm trying to reduce my caffeine intake. Well, that's because I want to be able to review stuff, and I want to be able to sort of review stuff with a lower tolerance to caffeine, because I feel like if I had just have a ridiculously high tolerance to caffeine, like... I'm not going to be able to review stuff as accurately because I won't be able to feel the effect that the caffeine has on me. So I want to start, you know, reducing my caffeine intake and just 
being able to focus on, you know, how much caffeine a product has, how it makes me feel, um, and of course how it tastes and just stuff like that. So what I've been doing recently is I've been only drinking like two cups of coffee per day. I'll drink a cup of coffee in the morning uh, when I'm um, at home, or I'll fill up my coffee cup at the beginning of the day, and then around probably 11 a.m., somewhere around there, noon, I'll drink my last cup of coffee for the day, and I don't have any caffeine after that point, because if you drink caffeine, caffeine has a half-life of roughly, it's either 12 or 6 hours, I can actually, I can fact check that right now, um, move my micro, oh, excuse me, burping, um, what is the half-life, half-life of caffeine, uh, about five hours, okay, so I was going to say six hours, so that's, I was, I was almost right, and the half-life, just in case you don't know, is the amount of time that it takes for a chemical to, for half of its, um, for half of the amount of a chemical to break down. So by five hours, that means that half of the caffeine that you drank is still in your brain, um, or caffeine that you've intaked in any way. I don't know. I don't want to think about the other ways that people just injecting caffeine, boofing caffeine, you know, but, um, that, but, so caffeine will still have an, if the half-life is five hours, like I just saw, that means that, uh, this cup of coffee right now that I'm drinking, Nine hours from now, that caffeine is still going to be floating around in my brain, having an effect on me. So it takes about 10 hours for a cup of coffee to completely leave your system. And, but uh, people say to not drink any caffeine or have any caffeine for about six hours before you go to bed. So what I'm trying right now is to not have any caffeine past noon. And that is just for the reason of lowering my tolerance for one, so I can better review products to actually feel what effects an energy drink or what a cup of coffee has on me. And to also just, you know, improve my quality of life, because if I want to perform the best, if I want to start going to the gym, if I want to start um, producing YouTube videos, I need to be able just to have sleep and, you know, be healthy and all of that, so I'm trying to not drink caffeine past noon, and of course on the weekends I'm going to completely, you know, get rid of that rule and whenever I record videos, but that's just going to be special occasions, um, you know, once, twice, three times a week, whatever that may be, but on most days I'm going to stop drinking caffeine past noon, and I'm a little bit weird. So a lot of people, uh, fucking caffeine addicts, um, they, (laughs) I'm saying that as if I'm not addicted to caffeine, they get headaches and stuff. Really, I don't get that many headaches when I stop drinking coffee or stop having caffeine. Like, on the weekend, I won't wake up until, you know, noon or 1 p.m. on the weekend, and I won't have, you know, I'll just be kind of walking aimlessly around the house confused and dazed because that's how I am when I wake up. I won't have, you know, coffee or anything or an energy drink for hours sometimes after I wake up just because I forget I just don't think about it I just go to my computer start playing video games doing whatever I'm doing and I just kind of forget to drink caffeine and I don't really get a headache or anything you know I drink water and I'm actually going to do that right now because I've been talking for a while I've got my water bottle here still have some coffee left I just need something to you know just drink (laughs) But, um, I just kind of forget to drink it in the morning sometimes, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm talking about all my flaws trying to start a caffeine channel here, but, um, (laughs) not start a caffeine channel, but reboot my caffeine channel. But I, uh, just forget to drink it. I've said that so many times at this point, I'm going to repeat myself 5,000 times before this podcast is over with, but I just don't really get a headache like a lot of people do, so I don't really have that much of a problem, like, quitting coffee, and that is another video that I want to do, maybe, like, you know, quitting caffeine for a month. I think that would be an interesting experiment to see, you know, what effect it really has on me, because I think that it doesn't have that much an effect of an effect on me, but I swear, if I stopped drinking caffeine for, like, a few days, I would probably be a non-functional human. <laughs> 
because it's an addiction. I mean, people say that, you know, drugs are bad and stuff, but then they'll go and just drink, they drink their cup of coffee every day and smoke a cigarette. I don't smoke for, um, just as a disclaimer, but um, they say they don't do drugs, but they're drinking coffee. I mean, caffeine's a drug. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. Probably get demonetized on YouTube for that, but it's, it's like an hour in, so we're fine. The The reviewers aren't, the, the AI isn't watching, the algorithm isn't watching this, us at this point but caffeine is a drug and you have withdrawal symptoms when you stop that drug so I mean I'm addicted to caffeine I mean I know that but you know some of the withdrawal symptoms aren't as bad as it normally is for some people I, I don't think but I think that would be an interesting experiment to do you know quitting caffeine for a month but that would be really hard to do because I would have to pick a month that I'm not traveling because if I'm traveling I'm gonna have caffeine I'm gonna get some airport Starbucks and I would have to pick a month that like I can uh, backlog some videos and stuff like that so that'd be an interesting video but I think that I'm going to start winding the podcast down. We're almost in an hour, and I definitely didn't plan on doing an hour, but it happened, and it was a rocky start. But we got there, and I hope that you will like and subscribe because that would really help. I'm trying to get to a 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I kind of... It's a lofty goal, you know, 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I don't know if there's that much of a market for caffeine, but hey, I'm trying to build a community, I'm trying to let you guys know who I am, I'm trying to express my views on the world through this podcast, and maybe this podcast will even get a separate channel one day, but um, anyway, thanks for tuning in to the Caffeine Cast, and uh, I hope you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe and click the notification bell so you get a notification when I upload, and I'm either going to, I haven't decided yet for Fully. We're still getting started here, but I either want to post this podcast on a Monday or a Friday. Uh, maybe we'll test around a little bit, see what happens, see what does the best. But reviews should pick up again here in the next couple weeks. There may be one more episode of the podcast before reviews get kicked up again, um, get started up again, because I'm going to get my coffee equipment, my new coffee equipment next week, and I'm going to have to perfect my method, as I said in the beginning of this podcast. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.